So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the realistic side of trading. I'm going to show you in a live example of that with the fact that recently passed a phase one and phase two, my Forex funds, but coming into phase two, I went through a drawdown period, which was really interesting for myself. It was a bit of a test, especially with the people inside Envision markets, being able to see every trade that I'm taking and it added a little bit of pressure, but it was a good test for myself. You're going to see the realistic side of trading in today's video. No fluff, no BS straight to the point let's dig in right we're going to take a look at the trade that allowed me to essentially get over the evaluation stage however please bear in mind that technicals are just one part i think a lot of people just seem to forget this part the mental game is what helped me pass the reason being if you're in a period where you've taken five losses like i was right so phase one evaluation went absolutely perfect very consistent phase two i initiated first five trades that i took with losing trades which for me is my max drawdown. I shouldn't be really taking five trades. It's very rare that I take five losing trades in a row. So that's when I essentially have the recovery strategy to put in place, but because it's a funded account, you have a time limit on, which now you don't obviously, but when I was doing this evaluation, you had a time limit on challenges still. So I didn't put the recovery strategy in place for the funded accounts, only my personal ones, which meant that I reduced the capital by half. Now, the reason it's so important to keep your mental game intact and ha to have that bulletproof mentality is, imagine you've taken five losing trades. Can you still pl pull the trigger on the sixth trade? That's the key question you wanna be asking yourself because the vast majority of people would not be able to. And the fact as well, because like I said, I am posting every single trade that I take inside Envision Markets. So the top tier members can see what trades I take, when I take them, um, and can see the whole an analysis behind that. So the fact that I was doing that, I was very well aware in the back of my mind that people were obviously watching and they were well aware that I was on five losing trades in a row. So it added that little extra touch of pressure to the trades. But I almost saw it as a test to myself to be like, right, okay, you think you know yourself, you think you know your plan, you think you know, you think you have a good mental game, like test yourself, see how, uh, you know, see how good your mentality is. So managed to thankfully just pull the trigger on this, obviously sticking to the plan. I'm gonna walk you through this trade. Um, so yeah, five losing trades in a row. This was one of the winning trades that got me back into the positive. And then it was the next one on Dollar Swiss, which I actually passed with. Um, but this is kind of the main trade because of the significance of it at the time that I was going through. So we'll go through it now. But yeah, let's dig in. So we'll start off with the, we'll start off with the daily. Higher time frame narrative is so important. Right, so what was the reason that I took this trade itself? Now, overall, from a higher time frame standpoint, we can see, if we take a little bit of a history lesson here, September's monthly candle swept all liquidity to the left. So we got the sweep of this low, this low, and this low, which then fueled the move higher, right? We then get a break of structure, price pulled back into discount pricing before accumulating and then continuing higher. Right, so you can see, Pound yen over the past few months has been pretty much in a parabolic phase. It's looking more like a crypto, if anything, rather than an FX pair. So it's been very interesting to trade through this and we've had a lot of opportunities. Now, it was really here. So here, we've come from that parabolic phase, right? And you have to understand the context of this. When the market's moving like this, it's a different market cycle. Let's just back out and let me show you what I mean. Some of you may know this, some of you will not know this based on experience, this is clearly a different market cycle to this. So the reason I say that is because you have to be able to adapt. Although you have a plan in place, although you have a system in place, you have to be able to know what market cycle we're in. For example, in this cycle here, where it's a bit more in a consolidation period, you can happily take buys and sells, you can capitalize on both sides of the move. Both pro trend and counter trend moves will be playing out quite well counter trend moves may have a higher strike rate within this period. However, in this period where price is just moving with very shallow pullbacks, is it really worth taking counter trend moves because all of these are just gonna be blasted through because you've got that higher time frame narrative of the daily just being parabolic. So it's important to really bear that in mind when you are trading in these cycles. So I was well aware that, right, price is gonna move. We're not gonna really present that many pullbacks. It's just gonna continue. So that was the daily four hour 
we have come from this impulsive leg and we are starting to show the first signs of ascending. However, overall, order flow is still bullish on this time frame, daily time frame, and the one hour. So overall, happy to play continuations of the trend. So four hours bullish, we, if I just go back, so it was here. So if I just go back, so it was really here <clears throat> that I took the trade from. So we had trend is bullish, higher high, higher low, higher high. Price here on Monday swept previous daily high from Friday and correctively pulled back into the area of value that I was looking at, right? And bearing in mind, this is discounted price of the leg itself. So we got this low to this high, discounted section of the leg. Overall, from a daily standpoint, we are in premium, but you have to understand, once again, the context of the leg itself and the market cycle we're currently in. So anticipating that we're just gonna get shallow pullbacks and continue, I was looking for the trade. So that was the one hour, 15 minute. We had every, everything from an intraday standpoint to validate the trade. Asia highs was not taken, therefore it's liquidity, which is perfect. London highs was not yet taken, which was liquidity as well. Asia lows were swept, a few couple things in here as well. And then we got the lower time frame entry for the actual trade itself. So let me just break this down. Now I enter using the five, three and two minute but I'll just show you on the five. So triggered into the trade here. Didn't take long for price to move. I was watching a couple of key areas to see how price reacted to that as per my management rules. Start to react here, create that double top as uh, liquidity essentially before moving through. And first target for price was really here, but I didn't take profit there because it's pound yen. I'll have a management system in place for the swing high, swing low. So it was targeting 6.5%. Now it reached this high within the day. So 4 p.m., 5 p.m., it reached this high. So it could have taken profit, didn't. But obviously at this stage, I have profit locked in. I had my trade, uh, you know, bulletproofed essentially. And it took a little bit of time to play out over Asia. As you can see, price started to pull back from, where was that? 4.7 to around just above two. So it's pulled, it's pulled back almost 3%, which which is, is fine. Any any more than that is a bit of a, like let's say for example, it was running at 7% and it pulled back for two. I wouldn't really be comfortable with that. So you've got to know what you're comfortable with and what you're not comfortable with. And then overall price it's TP, which is that swing high for 6.55. So beautiful trade, but once again, going back to the fact that this is less about the strategy. This is less about the technical game. This is more the discipline to execute that six trade, not knowing that that could still be a loss. That could still be a break even. It didn't have to be a win, right? Because when you've come from a period where you've taken five losses in a row, your confidence is not the best. Personally, for me, I didn't really let it affect me as much as what I would have done in the past. So had I been one or two years into my journey at that point, I would have probably just folded and I wouldn't be able to cope with the pressure of, I've taken five losing trades now, I'm on the phase two, um, there's people watching me, like I, I would let the pressure get to me, but because I've been in the market six years now, and I've been through these periods multiple times, I've got skin in the game, so I know just to trust the process. Um, a key lesson though, actually, that I wanna mention, everyone throws around this term of probabilities, and I've done the same before as well. But with a slightly deeper understanding of probabilities, we have to understand that if you do go on a period of drawdown, you need to know your max drawdown period and what it should be in your tested historical data to know if you are coming up to that area, let's say it's five trades, you need to be aware that you shouldn't really be taking more than five losses in a row unless something is going wrong. Secondly, although we have to obviously trust probabilities, for me personally, one of the biggest lessons within this was to check myself was to just pause after those five losing trades and be like, right, are all of these trades sticking to the plan? They did. However, I needed to look into it a little bit more deeper. What is the market environment right now? What are the market cycles? Right, we're in a parabolic bullish phase on pound yen and various other pairs as well. Do I really need to be taking counter trend trades? And four out of those five losing trades were counter trend trades, telling me everything I needed to know because Count trend trades in a bullish market cycle like we're currently in on this pair and various others is not going to hold the same weight as in a consolidation based market. Therefore, 
the strike rate is going to be lower. You have to bear that in mind. So what I needed to do is check myself and check everything was right, which it wasn't. So I needed to make a small adjustment, which was instead of taking counter trend trades, just focus on pro trend trades only with the trend, make it simple for yourself and made that tweak. And the next two trades were pro trend and all of a sudden, boom, passed. So yeah, some really key lessons in there. And this is why it's important to have that bulletproof mentality, which comes with trading. It takes a little while to develop, but you have to invest in yourself and you have to do the self work to create that bulletproof mindset, because otherwise you could have the best technical game on the planet, but unless you have the correct psychology and the correct mental game in place, you're not going to be able to do very well for that long. You're going to get pressure. You're going to get stress so many factors involved so just please bear that in mind because i see a lot of people losing this game and i've seen a lot of people come and go throughout the six years i've been involved in the markets most of the time it tends to be the mental game so just please bear that in mind but overall hope you've enjoyed this video i will catch you in the next one see you soon